Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Here is yet another episode of the top 10 favorite and from what I believe are the best performances given by some of the greatest actors ever. Yes, I'm starting from 10 and then working my way up to number one. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, I have seen every film that is attainable of these artists. So all of these lists come from true and passionate accuracy. It is with a heavy heart, my friends, to hear of the most recent passing of a wonderfully underrated actor. His name is Dean Stockwell. Born in North Hollywood from a family of entertainers, get this, his dad was Harry Stockwell, who did the voice of Prince Charming in the original 1937 Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. One song. Yep, that's him. Plus, his siblings were actors on stage and later television as well. So I guess keep up the family tradition, huh? He was only seven years old when he got his first job in a small part on Broadway, but that led to earning a contract with MGM, and it was incredible how many films he appeared in as a child actor. Working with the likes of Gregory Peck, Gene Kelly, Catherine Grayson, Joel McRae, and Errol Flynn. Even though he had learned so many fun and important lessons growing up in the business, Dean Stockwell really did not enjoy being a child actor. It was required by law that while shooting a film, he would be allowed to have only three hours worth of schooling a day. Of course, a lot of kids would scream hallelujah over that clause, but not Dean. He was really a comedic actor at heart, but the studio felt he was good enough to continue with serious roles. He wished for more comedy, but it's amazing what the future holds when you put in the effort and stay consistent. In his 70 years of being in the business, he basically had two comebacks, with his second comeback in the 80s giving us one of the best sidekick characters on television in the classic Quantum Leap. Oh boy. Side note, a lot of people say I actually look like Scott Bakula, which hey, I don't mind. Stockwell's Emmy-nominated and Golden Globe-winning performance as Admiral Al is definitely the number one thing he's recognized for across the world, which of course, he was utterly hilarious and fantastic. The cigar was his idea. In the fashion sense, oh boy. But he's done other amazing things for television as well. Like one of my favorites is his appearance in the Twilight Zone episode entitled A Quality of Mercy, where he plays an American racist soldier who's about to launch a huge attack on the Japanese and then literally has his own quantum leap, who and then becomes a Japanese soldier before the attack. So many contributions to TV, but ladies and gentlemen, we must not forget his incredible work in film, which, honest to God, I could definitely do a top 20 for this man. He's had that many great performances, but of course, ladies and gents, rules are rules, and we like rules, don't we? So let's go, folks. Here are the top 10 best performances of the late and great Dean Stockwell. Starting off at number 10, we have Anchors Away, one of my favorite musicals ever, and Dean Stockwell's feature debut. If you don't know the story, it's Gene Kelly and Frank Sinatra as Navy buddies who go on leave in LA and bump into a small little kid played by a nine-year-old and adorable Dean Stockwell who wants to sign up in the Navy. How adorable. He then introduces the sailors to Catherine Grayson and then the googly eyes between Gene Kelly and Grayson start to sparkle, as difficult as it is. Stockwell always said that this was one of the more fun times he had as a child actor since this movie really is so much fun, and Stockwell already showed such promise and sincerity in a future career from this film. He's also so darn cute in the role of Donald. You can't resist his innocent and lovable charms here. Number nine, Paris, Texas. Now we're in the resurgence era for Stockwell, which is where the real fun continues. If you have not seen this film, Paris, Texas, oh my God. It is literally one of the best independent films ever made. Dean Stockwell plays Walt, a hardworking brother of Travis, played brilliantly by Harry Dean Stanton, by the way. And Travis has been missing for four years. No one knows what happened to him. But then he reappears, and Stockwell tries to help him rebuild his life, starting from earning the love from his son again. Like I said, it is a truly moving and beautifully made film about discovery, responsibility, and nature. And since it was made by a British filmmaker, 
It was technically classified as a foreign film, so it wasn't seen that much, but now it's a very well-deserved cult classic. The film honestly does not work completely without the performances, especially from Stockwell, who gives a grounded sense of reality to the role of Walt. We can see through the actions and body language of Stockwell just how deep the relationship has gone and what has transpired before Stanton's disappearance. I say indeed, add this film to your must-see list. Number 8, Rapture. Another amazing independent film, this time from 1965. We're going back and forth here, people. This film honestly surprised me. This stars Patricia Gozzi as Agnes, who is a lonely, wild-eyed teenage girl who dreams of such a greater life full of love. We're made to believe that Agnes is mentally unstable by her possessive and disgruntled father, played really wonderfully by Melvin Douglas. We can see there is so much tension between these two. No loving relationship is really there until an escaped convict played by Stockwell, shows up at their door, and they agree to take him in. Douglas almost feels like he's the son he's never had. And to Agnes, Stockwell is basically the love of her life. Dean Stockwell gives such sensitivity to the role of Joseph. He's much more than just a convict. We never really know what he was arrested for, but we see how much of a traveling man he is, physically and sexually. But when he genuinely chooses to fall for Agnes, that's when the stakes are escalated drastically. It could rub people the wrong way with its touch on relationships and touch on young love in this way, right? But the performances are what make this film very, very worthwhile, especially Stockwell's. Number seven, Blue Velvet. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, I think anyone who's anyone will always remember Stockwell with this iconic image of him holding a work light and lip syncing Roy Orbison. You can actually thank Stockwell himself for that because originally writer, director, and film extraordinaire David Lynch had Stockwell hold a microphone while lip syncing, but it just wasn't working as well. So Stockwell picked up a work light that one of the PAs was holding for lighting the scene, and Stockwell picked it up and used it for lighting. Lynch said, that's it! and replaced the microphone with the work light. Stockwell had said it was so much fun to work on this film with his one, count him one iconic scene in the brothel, which he plays the owner, Ben. I'll be honest, I remember being a teenager and wanting his jacket so badly. He was just so cool and chill, yet we're fully aware he is quite scary. <laughs> the whole sequence of In Dreams with Stockwell in the spotlight to please Frank is still very chilling. This was during Stockwell's resurgence in the 80s, so he completely owns the role of Ben. As Frank says, and rightfully so, damn, you're one suave f***er. Number six, Gentleman's Agreement. This film might be an acquired taste for some people, but I genuinely appreciate and respect this film. Directed by Elia Kazan and starring Gregory Peck as a reporter who is appointed to write a series of articles on anti-Semitism, and he discovers one thing that maybe will give him accuracy on the journalism that he claims he and his family are Jewish. Within no time, he encounters bigotry like no one expects, including his darling son, played exquisitely by Dean Stockwell. Stockwell was still at the height of his child actor stardom during this time of 1947, but he still did not like doing drama. He felt it was like a chore, which how could you blame him? He was a child, so he wants to have fun. One of the first questions he would always ask his parents when he got another film was, is there a crying scene? He just hated doing the serious movies as a kid. He really wanted to do more comedy, which he absolutely loved and thankfully got the chance to do more in his resurgence in the 70s and the 80s. Stockwell looks back on this film with not a lot of fond memories, actually, like a lot of the artists that worked on this film. He didn't get along with Gregory Peck, which he had his own issues during this film, and it was too dramatic to tackle. But I sincerely think Stockwell succeeded gracefully in this film. There is a beautiful scene where he's trying to get his dad's attention about what happened at school that day, and his dad is too preoccupied with his own attack of bigotry, until Stockwell just breaks down. His dad comes to his side, and Stockwell talks about the kids at school, saying, no dirty little Jew is going to play with us. 
Stockwell gives such grace to the role of Tommy, which is why he received a special Golden Globe for his performance in this film. I say check it out at least once. I mean, hey, it won Best Picture. Number five, Tucker, The Man and His Dream. The lovely biopic of Preston Tucker, a dreamer who wants to create the best cars ever made in America. Jeff Bridges plays the man, and can I just say, I love Jeff Bridges, or should I just say, the dude. But anyway, Dean Stockwell gives, in my opinion, one of the best cameos in film, and also one of the best performances as the tycoon himself, Howard Hughes. He literally only has one scene, but damn is he brilliant. Dean Stockwell was actually in New Mexico, filming the classic The Gambler Part 3, The Legend Continues, with everyone's favorite Kenny Rogers. No end to fold him. Director Francis Ford Coppola called him and wanted him to play Howard Hughes, which Stockwell felt so wrong for, but he wanted to play it. So he hopped on a plane to the set in Sonoma, and Coppola gave him three different scripts for the tense scene between Howard Hughes and Tucker. Stockwell compiled all three in one day, and then they shot the scene. He basically picked and chose as far as what's going to be able to build the character at his own capacity, and how he could really stretch himself within this role. Stockwell was smart enough to ask for lumber to stand on next to Jeff Bridges because Howard Hughes was like 6'4", and Stockwell was 5'7". It all worked out because Stockwell gave Howard Hughes just the right amount of intensity and focus that the character of Howard Hughes embodies. And mind you, he created his performance within a few days. That is the work of a true pro. Number four, Compulsion. Came out in 1959, starring Dean Stockwell and Bradford Dillman as college students who commit murder for a philosophical exercise to commit the absolute flawless crime. One of them leaves a key piece of evidence at the crime scene, and then, of course, are taken to trial. They then acquire the expert assistance of Jonathan Wilk, a famous attorney played by Orson Welles, to get them acquitted. This is a great film adaptation from the novel, and then the play that Dean Stockwell and Roddy McDowell did on Broadway. Stockwell is an utter true form here as Judd Steiner, the sociopathic college student who does want a better life outside of his wealthy and bland existence, but feels pressured by his partner Arthur Strauss, even though he has developed these awful inspirations to commit a ghastly crime. The whole basis of this story is indeed inspired by the real-life crime story of Leopold and Loeb, the college students who killed a boy and were represented by famed attorney Clarence Darrow. And I think it is one of the better film adaptations on the case, next to Alfred Hitchcock's Rope. Yes, I actually really like that film, don't judge me. Stockwell gives everything to this role, which won him a Best Actor Award at Cannes Film Festival, which was shared with his co-stars Wells and Dillman. What makes Stockwell stick out so well here is that he treats the character of Judge Steiner like any professional would do, giving him the same human qualities and clear, understandable, and justifiable objectives as any character deserves. Brilliant performance here. Number three, Sons and Lovers. Based on the classic novel by D.H. Lawrence, it tells the story of the Morell family, with Paul Morell being at the center of it, played very maturely by Dean Stockwell. The Morels live in the quaint mining town of Bestwood, England, where the father is a simple, rough, and alcoholic coal miner. The mother is lonely and repressed, and there are three sons who all want separate lives for themselves. Paul is a true artist of raw ability, self-taught. It takes any opportunity to go to London to become a true professional artist. But then the complications of love and sex become a huge distraction to his dreams. D.H. Lawrence was indeed very infamous for his sexual overtones in his novels, especially this one. It was such a controversy for this film even to be made. The amazing cinematographer turned director, Jack Cardiff, chose to cast Dean Stockwell to hopefully get the film distributed in the US, since Stockwell was the only American in the cast. They succeeded very well, which resulted in the film being nominated for seven Oscars and winning one for Best Black and White Cinematography. The performances are what make this film stimulating. Stockwell's Golden Globe nominated performance breaks down the immaturity, the yearning, the desperation, and the heartache of Paul Morell. All the scenes between he and Wendy Hiller, who plays his mother, 
are just spellbinding. And if you know D.H. Lawrence's work, you know the subtext going on there. I do recommend this film for sure, for the ones who really love novel film adaptations. Plus, Stockwell's accent work is very nice. Well done. Number two, Long Day's Journey Into Night. Utterly, utterly exhilarating. This is one of my favorite film adaptations from any play. Based on the Eugene O'Neill classic, it chronicles one hot summer day of the Tyrone family at their home in Connecticut. Scene by scene, we see the family falling apart when repressed feelings and resentments are slowly slipping out and then damaging the family from the inside out. Dean Stockwell plays Edmund, the poetic youngest son who is slowly dying of tuberculosis, much to the denial of his drug-addicted and a little overbearing mother, Mary. Say what you will about this film adaptations, you Eugene O'Neill enthusiasts. Like Sons and Lovers, they cut too much out of the play. They rush so much of it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I get it, ladies and gentlemen. And I do understand, and I agree. It is wrong to cut out from the utter brilliance of the full play. But once again, it is Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. They always look at what is going to fit with more audiences. And so I believe in this case of this adaptation, they cut what they needed to do with the best intentions. Yes, I know the road to hell is paved with good intentions, but with that being said, do I really need to give the synopsis of this play again? This is literally hell for every one of them. Every performance is brilliant. A lot of people don't give Stockwell enough credit for his work here. He gives such sensitivity and poetry to Edmund that seeing his performance when I was in college struck me even more so that he became one of my favorite characters to hopefully play one day. I said before in Katherine Hepburn's video that I did first see this in high school, right? And then I fell asleep. And it wasn't really until later that I really gravitated more to Stockwell's genuinely heartbreaking performance here. His many monologues are just as soft and energetic and rapid as the whitewashing ocean. Once again, he won the Best Actor Award at the Cannes Film Festival shared with his co-stars, Sir Ralph Richardson and Jason Robards. If you're a fan of brilliant acting, theater, and poetry in general, carve out the three hours this film deserves and see this for yourself. Amazing, amazing work from everyone, but especially Dean Stockwell. Here are just a couple of honorable mentions. Air Force One. Everyone's favorite president, Harrison Ford, taken hostage on his plane with his family and other passengers and doing everything he can to battle those Russians and save everybody, but not without the help of his VP and his defense secretary, played by Dean Stockwell. Why are defense secretaries always a pain in the ass in the movies? But at least Stockwell had such realism and empathy to his performance. The Careless Years, a youthful film of two youths, Dean Stockwell and Natalie Trundy, high school sweethearts from opposite sides of the track who want to get married, but when their families disapprove, they want to elope in Mexico. This is indeed a film that showcases the raw energy of Dean Stockwell, and does he display it very, very well. It is definitely the teen idol movie of the week, but it does have such beautiful moments in here, specifically from Dean Stockwell when he's battling his father. The Boy with the Green Hair, a film and performance that Dean Stockwell holds very dear to his heart, as do a lot of audiences today do. He plays an orphan boy who is taken in by Gramp, and then once the word is out about another war, the boy agrees to help. Once the boy actually sums up the courage and takes part in helping everybody with the war, his hair turns green. He is then ridiculed by children and adults alike and then realizes he is a war orphan and sees what the effect war has on children and that he must spread the news. Stockwell loved this film because he knew at the age he filmed it, at 11 years old, that it was an anti-war film and he knew how serious it was and found it was a project he was very proud of. And indeed, the film is very much appreciated and loved even to this day. Unabomber, the true story. Another TV film that really surprised me chronicling the experience and journey of the people affected by the attacks of the terrorist Ted Kaczynski. 
Dean Stockwell plays Ben Jeffries, based on a real postal inspector who dedicates 11 years in finding the person who killed three people and injured 23 through the course of 17 years with his bombings. Stockwell gives such a nuanced performance that made this simple little TV movie stick out to me. Plus what helps is that Tobin Bell, who plays John in the Saw movies, plays Kaczynski really well, I might add. The Secret Garden, the original 1949 film adaptation of the famous book that I remember reading bits and pieces as a kid. I've only seen a few of the film adaptations, but this one is for sure entertaining. If you don't know the story, I'll sum it up briefly. A spoiled girl who unfortunately loses her parents is sent to live with her uncle and is neglected. She one day wanders about and finds a hidden unkept garden behind a wall, and with her two new, just as spoiled friends, they create a world of their own. Little Dean plays Colin, who is crippled and becomes one of her friends, reluctantly. Stockwell has said he didn't like working on this film at all, given to the serious subject matter and a lot of the scenes involving him crying, which again, he hated, but hey, even at 12 years old, he was still in the beginnings of being a pro because his emotional breakdown scenes are very, very effective and heartbreaking. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, Married to the Mob. This is actually Dean Stockwell's personal favorite performance of his own throughout his whole career in film, which is absolutely understandable, and I agree, abs honestly, wholeheartedly, because he chews up the scenery left to right as the infamous gangster Tony the Tiger Russo. Want to know the story? Sure! Angela DeMarco, played wonderfully by Michelle Pfeiffer, just hates her life as a gangster's wife. Tony the Tiger actually kills her husband and then puts the moves on her. Angela goes on the run, tries to start a new life with her son, but the FBI believes she is behind more illegal activity, which sparks a whole wild undercover scheme. At the pure center of this film is a romance drama, but in order to earn the romance and the drama, we are surrounded by a zany farce. And you know what? It works. It works so damn well. It's held by Jonathan Demme, who directed Silence of the Lambs and Something Wild, so you know it's good. Dean Stockwell indeed provides more of the laughs and fun to this film. The whole drive through sequence and assassination attempt on Tony the Tiger is just inspiring to me. The stance of Stockwell just firing off his pistols at the other assassins and Chris Isaac is just so fun. There is every bit of charm, wit, sass, and zaniness of Stockwell that makes this indeed his best. This was unfortunately Stockwell's only Academy Award nominated performance for Best Supporting Actor here, and deserved it, he did. Awards are always a funny thing, right? Like we need an award to prove we are worthy and it validates our efforts and abilities. Not true at all. It's nice, of course, but it's not necessary. That's what I love about Dean Stockwell. He never really took stock in the whole awards hoopla. He just chose to stay true to who he was, use the abilities he had at hand, and step up those abilities as an actor. May he rest in peace with all of the greats that came before him and right alongside him. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Please tell me, do you agree with this list? What are some of your favorite Dean Stockwell performances? Please share in the comments below. I'm dead serious. I love to hear your thoughts. If you like this, please click like. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated on any new material. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Please make someone smile today. And as Al said, don't do anything I wouldn't do. And if you do, take pictures. <laughs>